the powerhouse fiery full moon in Leo. This is a bold sparkly. We can't miss this full moon. The first full moon of 2024, this is going to be an opportunity for us to muster the courage and the strength to make a powerful change in our lives where we most need it. An area that is foundational, it involves our material security, our well-being, our sense of security in our future going forward. And as a result of saying yes to our hearts during this full moon in Leo, we are going to be quite proud of ourselves. This full moon is happening on January 25th, 2024, 9.54 a.m. Pacific Time, 12.54 p.m. Eastern Time, and 5.54 p.m. Universal Time. So adjust the time for wherever you will be, my friend, during this first full moon of 2024. This full moon is happening on January 25th, 2024, 9.54 a.m. Pacific Time, 12.54 p.m. Eastern Time, and 5.54 p.m. Universal Time. This video has two parts. In part one, I'm going to share with you who will feel this full moon in Leo most personally, most intensely, based on the planets and points, the degrees of those planets and points in your natal astrology chart. I'm also going to share with you the aspects that the other planets are making to this full moon, which is what determines how we're going to feel these energies, but also how we can best navigate this full moon, which again, it's a powerhouse full moon, how we can best navigate it with the most ease, grace, and empowerment. And empowerment is a key word for this full moon and I'm going to tell you why in part one of this video. I'm also going to share with you at the end of part one tips on how you can best work with these energies. So I highly encourage you to watch part one because I won't be repeating what I share in part one in part two. And part two is your 12 sign readings. In which area of your life will you be feeling this full moon in Leo? In your 12 sign reading, I will be sharing based on your rising sign, not only which area of life will you be feeling this, but also a channeled message from spirit as well as pulling an oracle card for each of the 12 signs. This is a timeline shifting full moon. What do I mean by timeline? I mean, we are going, we are getting the invitation. We get to choose. We're, we're being given the invitation to rise to the next level of our soul's evolution. This is that important of a full moon. So before I go further into that, I want to say hello and welcome if you're new to me. I'm so glad you found my channel. This is a like-minded community. It's my intention always to empower you through the astrology. So if this is what you're looking for, including a connection to tribe, be sure and subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you won't miss a video. Hello and welcome back to those of you who've been watching my videos for some time. Thank you for being here. I so appreciate your support of my channel and hello to all my Sunday chat friends, we gather every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time for the premiere of these videos. I'm Betsy Gutting. I am a psychic astrologer as well as an intuitive life coach and the author of the book, The Magic of Saying Yes, Answering Your Heart's True Calling. In my videos and professional astrology consultations, I weave together divine downloads, spiritual insights, and Western tropical astrology. This video will be a general reading of the full moon in Leo. If you'd like a personal astrology consultation, I will tell you more about my consultations as well as my coaching at the end of this video. And I also have a free gift for you. So stay tuned to the end of the video so you can find out how to get your free gift. And if you would like to receive my weekly inspirational astrology updates, which is the astrology between videos, you can go to my website now and subscribe for free and also get an instant download of that free gift. So who will feel this full moon in Leo most personally, most intensely? This full moon in Leo is happening at five degrees of Leo. So those of you who have planets or points in your natal astrology chart between zero and 10 degrees of Leo or the other fixed signs of Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio, you will feel this full moon most personally, most intensely. That said, all of us have five degrees of Leo someplace in our natal astrology chart. So you wanna look at your chart and see, where do I have five degrees of Leo? This is the area of your life where you're going to be most feeling this full moon. And additionally, where you have five degrees of Aquarius, that is the axis 
along which you will be feeling this full moon. And I'll shed more light on that in this video. Now, all full moons are what we call oppositions, which means that the moon is opposed to the sun during the full moon. And in this case, we have the moon in fiery, bold, courageous, I can do it myself, Leo. It's a fiercely independent energy. When I think of Leo energy, I think of taking the reins of your life, saying yes to your heart. It's full unbridled self-expression. It's living full out. It's coming fully alive. Across from this beautiful, sparkly, shine your light bright, Leo energy, we have the sun in Aquarius. The sun in Aquarius is also very independent. It's also very individualistic. It's let my freak flag fly. But in Aquarius energy, we're also looking at the whole, the collective, the community, the organizations that we're a part of. We're also looking at how can we do it in tribe? It's very tribal energy. So this is the balance that we are navigating during this full moon. Also, every full moon Moon is a culmination of a cycle. It's the end of a cycle. Something coming to fruition, something coming to manifestation, or something closing out, ending for us. So some of us could have a beautiful manifestation during this full moon, and others of us are cutting ties to something. Others of us are cutting the cords to energies or relationships or situations or jobs. We're saying, this isn't right for me. So every full moon is different for each of us. This full moon reminds me of the quote from Helen Keller, life is a daring adventure or nothing. To me, this is very much of a Leo quote because it's like, go all out, test your own limits, go beyond your limits, rise to the occasion, muster the strength, gather your courage, do the thing that you feel you cannot do, as Eleanor Roosevelt said it. Leo energy is symbolized by the regal lion. It is our spiritual royalty. It is the part of us that wants to be seen and recognized. It is our divine inner child. It is where we are being called to take care of that part of us that needs extra support, that needs extra TLC, that needs extra praise. In the Leo area of your chart, my friend, and leave me a comment, let me know if this is true for you. In the Leo area of your chart, this may be where you have more insecurities coming up, where you have a desire for more recognition, where you really want to succeed. If nothing else, in the Leo energy of your chart, this is where when you rise to the occasion, when you do that hard thing, when you go beyond what you think you can't do, this is where you feel most proud of yourself. Because Leo rules our hearts, it is ruled by the sun, this is our life force energy. It's the fifth house of adventure, passion, freedom, independence, saying yes to your heart, our blossoming creativity, our courage to come out into the world and share our gifts. It's also true love and romance, the fifth house. This is where we want to fan out our peacock feathers and feel beautiful, feel handsome, feel appreciated for our beauty inside and out. Now this said, in Leo energy, we generally don't like change. It's a fixed energy. Fixed energy says let's maintain things as they are. An Aquarius where the sun is, is also fixed energy. So this is a fixed axis of our chart. And it may be for you, it is for me for sure, where change is more difficult. Not only this, but this theme of change is very much part of this full moon energy. Why do I say this? Because the full moon is happening at five degrees and five degrees is the number of change. Five degrees, fifth house, Leo energy. This is change. This is our desire for more freedom, for more authenticity, for more independence. So for many of us during this full moon, we're going to feel a call, a calling of our soul to make a change that may feel hard at first, but once we do it, once we delve in, we do the research, we get the support so that we can make that change with confidence and courage. Once we do that, we've moved into the next level of our mastery. And this is big. This is something to celebrate. This is something to really give ourselves lots of accolades for. In the tarot, the card of Leo is the strength card. So we are calling on our strength, our internal strength, to make a change 
so that we can feel better about this area of our life. Now, why do I say we're mustering courage and strength during this full moon to rise to a challenge and then prevail? Why am I saying this? Well, before I tell you that, I have to tell you that this full moon is a culmination of the new moon that we had in Leo, the new moon in Leo, which was August 16th of 2023. So you may want to look back to August 16th and think about what were you doing during that time? What were you thinking about? What seeds of intention did you plant? What did you want to create in your life? Maybe even looking forward to your future into 2024. What was something that was on your mind and important to you? Not only is this full moon a culmination of that August 16th new moon in Leo, but it's also a mini culmination, a mini culmination of the new moon in Capricorn that we just had on January 11th of 2024. If you recall, that new moon in Capricorn on January 11th made a trine positive energy flow to Uranus the Great Awakener. Many of us received a realization, an epiphany, or some sort of something coming up that made us realize we needed to make a change in this area of our life, this Leo Aquarius area of our life. And for you, my friend, I know this is true for me, it could have been some anxiety coming up during that January 11th new moon. It could have been a fear that showed up as a result of you wanting something in your life that is foundational, foundational to your well-being, foundational to your happiness. In other words, there may be an area of your life right now that feels important to you, but you're having some fear come up or some anxiety about the future. It may be where you feel some uncertainty and you don't feel like you have power over the outcome of how it's going to play out for you. It is this very thing that we are rising to the occasion of and facing and making a plan for taking action on during this Leo full moon. And for most of us, I do believe this is going to be around our emotional or our material security. And this is supported by the aspects that other planets are making to this full moon. This full moon is ruled by the sun. The sun is making a conjunction to Pluto. Now, those of you who know about Pluto, I just did a video for you on the biggest transit of 2024, which is Pluto moving into Aquarius, but not only this, on January 20th, the sun making a conjunction with Pluto, both in Capricorn and then in Aquarius on the same exact day, so I will link to that video in the description box below. You can watch that video for more information about this big epic transit of Pluto moving into Aquarius and it jumpstarting a brand new era for us. New era in terms of our soul's evolution. As souls, we are being invited into a brand new expression. We are rising to the next level of who we came here to be. And when the sun, as it's going to do during this full moon, makes a conjunction to Pluto, something is coming to light. Something is being illuminated, a truth, a realization, something maybe that we've swept under the rug or we've been in denial about or we just haven't seen because we weren't ready. We weren't ready to deal with it. We weren't ready to face a fear, perhaps. But now we are. Now we are. Most of us are ready. So if you have a fear that comes up, it could be, I don't want to repeat a past mistake in my life. I don't want to fail in an area of my life that maybe earlier in your life didn't go so well, or in a past life, it didn't go so well. In fact, in a past life, it could have been quite painful for you. Like you could have lost all your money in a past life. You could have had a devastating relationship ending. You could have had a falling out with somebody that really affected your heart in a past life or in this lifetime. And now that same area of your life is being highlighted by this full moon saying, we can do it differently this time. You're not the same person that you were before. You've grown. You've evolved. You are ready. You are ready. I want to really validate and, and emphasize. You are ready now to take this on, to face the fear, to move through any anxiety, to get the support, to do the research. You are ready to realize. You have more choices, my friend. You have more options than maybe you realized you had when it didn't go well before. So I find it fascinating that just five days after Pluto moves into Aquarius and it's at zero degrees, 
it comes together with the sun to shine light on something that we are ready to move through and evolve through and rise to the next level of in terms of our self mastery. Now, because the sun is conjuncting Pluto during the full moon, it means that the moon in Leo is opposing the full moon. And whenever you have an opposition of the moon and Pluto, it can bring up issues of family, the mother, ancestral stuff, or your home. So you may be called during this full moon to take back your power, to reclaim your truth and your power in any of these areas, home, family, mother, your ancestral line. This may be where you're clearing something out, you're purging some emotions because full moons do bring up emotions. They are a time of emotional release so that you can clear the space for what you most want going forward in 2024. This full moon is asking you, my friend, what can you strengthen? What can you strengthen so that you can feel most emotionally and or materially secure for your future? Because, says Jupiter in Taurus, Jupiter in Taurus says, because you deserve better. You deserve to not be giving your power away to something external, to something external like another person, a situation, a job, a boss, the stock market, the economy, your neighbors. This is anything or anyone that you are needing to be a certain way in order for you to feel safe and secure. This is Pluto energy. But during this full moon, we also have a T-square from Jupiter to the sun and the moon. Jupiter expands, it expands whatever it touches. It expands our good feelings, our optimism and our hope, which is really beautiful. It also expands our anxiety and our fear and our trepidation. So our mindset is key in terms of what we're clearing out and what we're creating space to bring in. This Jupiter energy could expand your awareness of choices, of options. And this is what we want. To me, this is what one of the big biggest gifts is of this full moon is that we can see, once we face our fear, if we have one, we can see more choices and more options. We can free ourselves from any feeling of I'm stuck or I'm trapped or I can't get out of this or because this person's this way or this is this way or because I need this amount of money or I need, you know, it's often I need, need, need a certain thing which we do as human beings in bodies. But at the same time in this Leo Aquarius energy, we often forget that there are other ways of approaching our situation or the relationship. There are other ways of looking at it. There are other ways of approaching it that can bring us back into our power. So yes, as a lot of astrologers will be talking about with this full moon, yes, Jupiter can make us do something to excess. We can overdo something. But what I really feel is happening during this full moon is that our emotions may be more amplified they may feel more intense as a result of the Pluto conjunction to the sun and Pluto opposing the moon. I think we're going to feel quite emotionally amplified. Now, very fortunately and supportively, Jupiter is making a beautiful aspect that we call a sextile, which is positive energy flow, which is an opportunity or a solution. Jupiter is sextiling Saturn and Pisces. Saturn energy is grounding. Saturn energy anchors us to our earthly reality. This energy, I think, is going to help us to look at what is real, what is true, where is the opportunity. During this full moon, if you can ask yourself, where can I look beyond what I've been looking at? Where can I expand my possibilities? Now, a few other quick tips for you on how you can best work with these energies, and then we'll get to the 12 sign readings. It helps me to remember that change is the essence of my being, as my friend and colleague Darren Wiseman says it. There is nothing constant in this human experience that we're having as spiritual beings. There's nothing constant that we can truly count on except change. And our human selves do not like that. Our human selves just roll their eyes. That can bring up fear, that truth. But we are meant to be constantly changing and evolving. We are souls that came here for a reason, to wake up to the truth of who we really are. We came here to wake up and experience the full aliveness and joy and passion of being in human bodies. And yes, 
part of the human experience is loss and sorrow as well. We all know this as humans. But when we remember that we came here to transform, we came here to evolve, we came here to rise to a new level of our evolution, we can also remember to trust our inner guidance. We have an inner GPS. We have guides. We have spiritual guides. We have angels. We have helpers, both in this life and on the other side, that are here to help us navigate what can be a bumpy ride. So my friend, if you don't know what your options are during this full moon, get advice from a professional. Set clear boundaries. If someone is moving your cheese around, as that book, Who Moved My Cheese? If someone's moving your cheese and you don't like where they put it, set a boundary. And if your boundaries aren't honored, then it tells you, you can't play with them in this playground of life right now. They're not good for your energy, at least currently. Claim your power to choose. Claim your power to make a change in this area of your life, which I'm going to talk with you about in a moment in the 12 sign readings. Even if you don't know what your choices are, that's where we can get professional help and that's where we can ask the divine, show me my choices, show me my opportunities. What are the other possibilities that I'm not seeing right now? Ask for that divine illumination because you are poised during this full moon, which is a very pivotal, important full moon with the sun conjunct Pluto and the moon opposing Pluto in Aquarius, which is jumpstarting a brand new era. This is an invitation, an opportunity, a gift of a time for us to move into the next greatest version of the next highest vision of who we came here to be. Okay, so let's do the 12 sign readings now. Listen for your rising sign. This is the area of life in which you are going to be experiencing this Leo full moon. Also listen to your sun sign. This is how your ego and personality will be experiencing the full moon. And your moon sign is how you will be experiencing it emotionally and in your relationships. So we're going to start with Leo because beautiful Leo, this is your full moon. You are going to be having this full moon in your first house of identity, the roles you play both personally and professionally, so your titles in your personal and professional lives, as well as your appearance and your vitality. We can feel this in our health because this is how we're feeling our full wholeness in our physical bodies. Leo, this is the area of your life in which you are taking the reins of your life. You are mustering the courage to rise to a new level of who you came here to be. This is a culmination of fruition or something coming to manifestation for you. This is where you are becoming stronger as a result of facing any fear or navigating any uncertainty during this full moon time. Now where the sun and Pluto are coming together to illuminate something for you, to give you a realization or to show you a truth that you didn't see before, this is in your seventh house of partnerships. So this is where you may see something that makes you realize, I have to make a change. You want to empower yourself. You're empowering yourself on this first and seventh house axis, your sense of self and identity, your true power, Leo. Your message from spirit, Leo, is come out as you are in your full authenticity. Give yourself permission to fully express who you are. Even if that means that other people in your life may not like it, or if you have a fear that if you come out even more, other people may criticize you, or that they may not like you, or that you will feel like you've disappointed somebody. Even if that's true, you're being called to feel the fear and do it anyway, Leo. So let's see what the cards have to say. I've been shuffling, and let's see what the cards have to say for you, Leo. <sighs> Leo. Your card is discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth. That's what this full moon in large measure, I believe, is going to be about with it, the sun conjuncting Pluto and the moon opposing Pluto. Pluto's all about shining light on a truth and us taking our power back and acting on it. And if you can see in this card, in the background, he's moving forward. He's walking forward on the path. And in the background, there's two people talking. And what I take from this card is that he overhears them saying something that is then a truth that he didn't see before that makes him realize, I need to act on this truth, whatever it is. So that may mean that you set a boundary. 
that you make a decision based on this truth that is very empowering for you, Leo, that is going to really improve your happiness, your emotional security, and or your material security. So to claim your truth, beautiful Leo, if you want to claim your truth and claim the fact that you are moving to the next level of your sense of freedom and authenticity, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Cancer. Hello, beautiful Cancers. I am a Cancer moon as well as a Cancer rising. So Cancers, we are having this full moon in Leo in our second house of earned income, our values, our possessions, our prized possessions, the assets that mean the most to us, our sense of self-worth and deserving, and our material security. So for you, Cancer, you could have a truth or a revelation or a realization that comes up for you or maybe already has with that Capricorn new moon about your material security. And because this moon is happening in the second house, it's across from the eighth house, of your investments, your shared resources with others, you could also have something come up around those areas of your life that where you feel I have to make some sort of change, some sort of improvement, or at least I have to look at this. I have to look at, do I feel materially secure right now? And if I don't, what do I want to do to change it? So for some of you, this could mean that you want to change your job. You want to get a side gig. You want to earn more money. You're changing your values or your values have changed. You're, you're looking at things from a whole new light. Maybe something has shifted because our economy has shifted and is shifting because there's so much uncertainty in 20, coming. You know, we've had uncertainty for years and years, right? But ever since 2020, at least, it's been quite uncertain in terms of our economy and the markets and all of that. But you may be feeling since this is happening on this money access for you, and the eighth house is also emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy with partners, and that is where the sun and Pluto will be conjuncting across from your second house of earned income. So you may really be looking at a partnership if you are in one or asking like, do I want to get a roommate to increase my finances? You may be thinking about partnership and how it would be easier for you financially if you had a partner. But something is coming up for you that has to do with your material security and it is where some of you may want to start your own business during this time or some manifestation or culmination may occur for you during this full moon where you are rising to the occasion, you are looking at something with new eyes, you are increasing your level of empowerment during this full moon so you can take the reins of your life in this money, security, shared resources area of your life. And also remember where the sun and Pluto are, this is the house of transformation, death and rebirth. So any fear that comes up for you during this time, it is meant to take you to the next level of your soul's evolution cancer, feel the fear, move through it, breathe through it, get to the bottom of it, get to the root of it. And you can get professional support from an astrologer or a coach like myself to do that, but get to the root of it so that you can get past it. This full moon wants us to get past our fears and feel more in control of this area of our life. So cancer, your message from spirit is very simple and it's three words and it is claim your power. Claim your power. The, the, the opportunities that you see right in front of you when you're in a place of fear are very limited. Once you move through that fear, your opportunities really open up. All of a sudden that little, that little bit of light that you saw becomes all the lights come on and you see everything. So it is well worth that deep dive that you may be doing during this full moon or before this full moon cancer. It is well worth the effort to shine the light on the vast array of opportunities that you have to solve any issue that you may see during the full moon. So let's pull a card for you, Cancer, beautiful Cancer, and see what the cards have for you. Ah, Cancer. And your card is, woo, I like it. Navigating by the stars, follow your bliss. Wow. For some of you, this is going to mean a job change. For some of you, this is going to be a new way of earning money. For some of you, you've been on the fence about, do I take a leap? Do I follow my bliss? Or And, and you could have a lot of fears come up around that. Do I do that? 
even though it's uncertain. And this card is saying, yes, uncertainty is part of the human experience. <laughs> your fulfillment is what your soul most wants. And so there is a trail and this person's walking on the trail, but they do have the stars to navigate by. So for some of you too, this could be a message of do more investigation into your astrology chart, into your natal chart, learn more astrology, learn more about you through your chart so that you can feel the peace and the comfort and the anchoredness that knowing your soul's blueprint can bring you beautiful cancer. So if you're ready to claim your bliss cancer, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Gemini, hello beautiful Gemini. Gemini, I have my natal sun in Gemini. So Geminis, those of you who are Gemini rising are experiencing this full moon in Leo in your third house. The third house is your immediate environment, your local networking. It is also your mindset and your communication, written and verbal. It is your journaling daily or writing if you write for your work or for pleasure or for your creativity. In terms of relationships, which full moons often bring up, this is your siblings. It is extended family members like aunts, uncles, and cousins, and also your neighbors. And this also includes landlords or people that you interact with if you have a mortgage, like mortgage lenders. It's also your devices and short trips. So you could feel a call to rise to the next level of mastery with any of these areas of your life. Some of you will be wondering, should I move to a new place? Should I change my location? Or should I change the location of things that I do on a regular basis, like working out, like doing yoga, like your shopping? Should I go to new places or should I say no to going to a place because that particular person that I see every time I go there who works there, for example, may be rubbing you the wrong way. And so you realize I need to stop going there. That's bringing my energy down. Anything that's draining your en energy, Gemini, during this full moon, we're being shown that. That's being illuminated for us by Pluto and the sun conjunct. Now, Geminis, you are receiving a sextile from the Leo energy, and that's really beautiful. Sextiles are solutions to problems that we didn't know how to solve, and sextiles are also new opportunities. So you may be receiving and seeing, and this may be your illumination of there's another opportunity for me. I'm going to leave this behind and say yes to this in any of these areas of your life. You also may have a, an aha moment about or a realization, and this may have happened during the Capricorn new moon that we just had, that you are ready to change your mindset, your inner narrative, your story about yourself or your life. That could also be very empowering to you. Your message from Spirit Gemini is take care of you. Put your own needs first. You taking care of your needs, Gemini, is going to anchor you, ground you more into your physical reality, your physical everyday reality, your home, your neighborhood, where you work, who you interact with. It's going to ground you more and make you feel more secure and also have a positive impact on the stories that we tell because... You're ruled by Mercury, Gemini. You're all, there's always a narrative going on. And of course, it's true for all of us. But especially for Geminis, they, you often have this inner narrative that if it's not empowering to you, it's draining your energy. So by taking care of your own needs, by putting yourself first, you're going to feel more secure, more stable, more safe, more solid and ready to rise to the next level of your soul's evolution, which is what this full moon is about. So let me shuffle the cards for you, Gemini, and see what the cards have to say. Gemini, ah, beautiful Gemini, your card is cleansing waters, purification activates vibrant life force. So I think this card is pretty straightforward. Focus on your needs. Focus on giving yourself the time out, the purification of your energy, the cleansing on some level. Full moons are about cleansing. They are about releasing. You may need to have a good cry. I love good cries, but I am double cancer energy after all. You may need to do something or, or get to do something. Give yourself the gift of doing something that 
detoxifies, that releases from you any energy that's felt stagnant, beautiful Gemini. This will activate your vibrant life force. So if you want to claim your vibrancy, beautiful Gemini, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. Taurus, you're going to experience the Leo full moon in your fourth house of home, family, childhood conditioning. This is your roots, your sense of belonging, where you want to feel like, I am in this world. I like being in this world. I like being in this body, in this world, in my home, in my family. And I know a lot of us have had really difficult family childhood experiences. So during this full moon for you, you could be doing some emotional cleansing or clearing or cutting ties to anything from your past anything from your childhood or past lives, which tend to bring repetition into our childhood and current life for us to heal. Something may be coming up for you to heal or change. Some of you anyway may be ready to feel more of a sense of belonging and to really take that on, take the reins of your life, establish control for yourself in this area of your life. Now, where Pluto and the Sun are coming together is your 10th house of career. So this is where you may receive a realization, an epiphany, an aha moment about what you want to change about your career, what needs strengthening, where you can muster the courage to either make a change or cut something out of your career. Oh, this is also legacy and retirement, semi-retirement. This is basically 10th house where we want to spend our time, our precious time, our precious life, where we want to devote a lot of our time for most of us. So for some of you, this could be, I'm ready to have my own business. I'm ready to be self-employed. I'm ready to be an entrepreneur. I am ready to muster the courage to say yes to my heart's desire, because after all, Leo does rule the heart. So your heart may really be activating you during this full moon in career or in your home and family life. It could be in any of these places. Taurus, your message from spirit is trust yourself. You know what you feel and sense, act on it. Take action on what you know in your gut. I'm getting your gut or in your heart or in your uh, crown chakra, the, the divine download that's coming in. You know what is true for you and what you need to do. So Taurus, I am now going to shuffle the cards. I am shuffling the cards for you. And let's see what the cards have to say for Taurus. Beautiful Taurus. Your card is Rejuvenating Rain. Clear the past and heal the present. When you clear your past, which came up when I talked about the fourth house, right? When you clear the past, you heal the present. You create a rejuvenating rain for yourself. You create a whole new beginning for yourself. You clear it out. And I love, to me, this card is very ethereal. To me, she feels very fairy-like. This feels very elemental. So some of you may want to call on the elementals if you relate to fairy beings or you relate to unseen spiritual beings that can be like the essence of a butterfly or the essence of a firefly or the essence of a dragonfly. You may want to call on those energies as well to bring you an illumination or a truth that you're not seeing, if there's something that you're not seeing, if you need more information. Clear the past. You will heal your present. You will make room for a brand new, more brilliant future, beautiful Taurus. If you want to claim your brilliant future, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Aries. Hello, beautiful Aries. Aries, you're going to have this Leo full moon in your fifth house of adventure, freedom, self-expression, inner child delight. This is where you are possibly coming out, manifesting, something's culminating for you in terms of a creative project. This could be anything, anything creative. Anything that you create with an, an idea in your mind that you're bringing out into the world or at least bringing out to at least one other person or to your family, you're showing somebody some aspect of your expression. This could also have to do with children, also true love and romance, Aries. So Aries, you could have a new romance that is 
blooming during this time or meeting a new person during this time, you're getting a trine from this energy. Leo is fire, you are fire, your energies are trining. That is bringing a beautiful ease, grace, and flow to this full moon for your energy. This is where you feel can feel like there's the wind is at your back. There's not a whole lot you necessarily have to do, but the sun and Pluto are coming together. The moon is opposing Pluto. So this could still be quite intense for you. Pluto does bring an intense energy. It could be intense passion. It could be a new opportunity that's like, Oh my gosh, like this is a huge opportunity for success, but it's a little bit scary because it feels so intense. It does feel so, you know, Jupiter is making a T-square to this moon. So you could feel like a real elevation of your emotions during this full moon where the sun and Pluto are coming together, shining a light on something that most of us didn't see before. Or for you, because this is a trine for you, you could just feel that it's expanding your sense of passion where that's happening for you is in your 11th house of social media platforms and friendships and groups and organizations where we are bringing our creativity out into the world. So you could be feeling it in that area or you're doing some online dating or you're meeting somebody by being out and about in the world. Often it is online with the 11th house, but this is also your hopes, wishes, and dreams and long-term gains. So you could also be receiving some dividends or you know i don't mean that technically but you could be receiving receiving some return on your investments during this time as well or getting an idea of an investment that you can make that may really pay off nicely for you now i do have to say that i don't feel that this is necessarily the best full moon for making a really risky investment which is often what we want to do what we feel um, ignited to do during a fifth house full moon but because Pluto's involved it's a little bit more risky and Jupiter really expanding the energy you could feel more optimistic about the result or outcome of something than is necessarily warranted by the facts. Aries your message from spirit is take action to clarify whatever you need clarification on. If you're not sure about something if something feels fuzzy if the truth about something feels a little bit unclear Take the action to clarify it, and that will strengthen your confidence in whatever choice or decision or step you're taking during this full moon. So, Aries, let's see what your card is. Aries, your card is... Ooh, really interesting. Reflect and redirect your energy. Impasse. Okay, this is really interesting to get for a full moon that is making a trine to your energy, which is usually a lot of flow, but I trust the cards. So this won't probably be for all of you, but for some of you, if you feel an impasse with another person or with a situation, if you feel like, and this is very typical of Pluto energy, where we feel like we're in a, in a power struggle or there's just no negotiating room. Both people want what they want <laughs> and it's hard to get what we want sometimes during when, when there's an impasse. Reflect on it and redirect your energy in a different way. Like focus on something else, at least temporarily, and that's going to open up that clear path for you where that, that trine energy is coming through. It's going to open up something for you it's like in this card there's this wall but it's a squirrel here and we all know that squirrels can easily scurry up the wall and go to the other side right but because often in leo energy we don't have the uh confidence necessarily we haven't done it before we don't know maybe the squirrel is just not aware that it can get there a different way or that it can just scurry 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 and get to the other side it has to look in a different direction at least temporarily. Or maybe, Aries, what you think you really want, is that a heart's desire? Is that a soul goal or is it an ego goal? If it's an ego goal, this full moon is all about soul goals. It's all about us following our soul's inspiration. It's about evolving at the soul level. That's what the brand new era of Pluto and Aquarius. It's all about us following our authentic path. So it could be, for some of you at least, that what you think you really want is not necessarily the best thing for you. It's not necessarily deeply rooted in what your heart and soul want. And this is why you feel at an impasse. 
So maybe reflect on what you really feel deep, deep down will bring you the most fulfillment and that will help you to clarify what you most want during this full moon, beautiful Aries. Okay, Pisces, hello, beautiful Pisces. Pisces, you are having this Leo full moon in your sixth house. Your sixth house is your health and your work. It's your everyday routines, your daily habits. So this is where you are going to be up-leveling. This is where you're taking the reins of your life. This is where you're taking control to have more fulfillment and more energy. This is really the house of energy, the sixth house. Now, where the sun and the Pluto, and Pluto, the Pluto, where the, where the sun and Pluto are conjoining together to illuminate something for you, to reveal the truth or shine a light for you, is in your 12th house. And the 12th house is where things can be hidden from us, where we do have to do a deeper dive. And I really highly suggest guided meditations for doing a deep dive into something that you're not seeing. And I do have a guided meditation playlist that I will link in my description box below, below this video. This 12th house where you might receive an aha moment is your house of retreat and rejuvenation and rest and the subconscious mind where we're often called to rewire our subconscious mind, to rewire a story that we're telling ourselves that's not fully empowering. This is your mystical world. This is the ethereal world where we get these beautiful down, divine downloads. So you are very likely going to receive with the sun and Pluto here, a divine download Pisces that's going to open something up and show you your possibilities, show you your opportunities where you have more options maybe than you saw before. Your message from spirit is attend to your practical needs. That is your physical health, your organization, your home, your office, whatever spaces that you're in, and also your physical body, your the food that you eat and the exercise, and um, I don't know why this is coming in, but for somebody, your blood pressure. I mean, Leo energy is about the heart. It rules the heart. It's our circulate, it's our blood circulation. I'm not a scientist, so I can't give you all that. But but basically, it has to do with the heart. So maybe blood pressure came in for a reason. But attend to those. If there's anything that's not feeling right in your body attend to what you know you need. You've been getting, I'm guessing, you've been getting intuitive guidance on what you need to make a change on. But this moon is very strongly with a T-square to Jupiter, with an opposition to Pluto and the sun conjuncting Pluto, very strongly showing us where it's important that we make a change for our soul's evolution. Very important. So let me pull a card for you. Let me pull a card, Pisces. Let's see. Your card is Pisces. I love this card. Answering the call, the time is now. When you make this change in your physical body, or in your health, in your exercise, in your daily habits, when you make the change, you're going to have the vitality and the energy and the confidence and the courage that is going to help you to walk through this portal. She's walking through a portal. She's saying yes to her soul's calling. And my book, The Magic of Saying Yes, Answering Your Heart's True Calling, is all about answering a call. It's all about taking on a new identity that our soul is giving us for that new identity. So that could be helpful for you as well. But if you are ready to claim your vibrant health or your empowerment at work, or just your everyday feeling of, I am in control of my energy, I am managing my energy beautifully. If you wanna claim that, beautiful Pisces, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Aquarius, hello beautiful Aquarius. Aquarius, you are experiencing this Leo full moon in your seventh house of committed partnerships both personal and professional. So spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, um, clients at work, um, co-workers with whom you have a close bond, anyone in your personal or professional life that you feel you guys have a spoken or unspoken commitment, this is seventh house relationships. It's also like our adult children. So this is many, many kinds of relationships, but the ones that are most important to us, the ones that people especially that we interact with on a regular basis, and this is where you are going to have a culmination, a manifestation, uh, something coming to a close, something that you're cutting ties to, or 
where you are taking the reins of your life, you're taking back control in one of these areas of your life. And I have to say, with Pluto energy, because Pluto's aspecting this as I talk about in the first half of the video, which I encourage you to watch Aquarius since you are one of the ones that's being most strongly activated by Pluto moving into your sign. Because this is happening, we can feel powerless. If this moon is making an aspect to any of your planets or points, you may feel powerless before you make the decision to empower yourself, to reclaim your power, to take back the reins of your life in a particular relationship. Now Aquarius, the sun and Pluto are in your sign, giving you a revelation, showing you something you didn't see before that you can then act on that will put you back in your power. So this is a super empowering full moon for you, Aquarius. It's super empowering. I love this full moon for you because you are going to be rising to the next level of who you came here to be. This is very much of an up leveling in your sense of self and in your partnerships kind of full moon. And your message from Spirit Aquarius is you are moving into a whole new world, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. Aquarius, no one to tell you no. <laughs> okay, Aquarius, this is your whole new world, full moon, just five degrees away from Pluto and Aquarius. This is a really big full moon for you. So Aquarius, Spirit says, you are putting your arms around what matters most to you during this full moon, and you are purifying yourself from anything that feels toxic to you in terms of a pattern very likely to do with relationships. This isn't all of you, not all of you. Not every one of you will be feeling that there's some pattern or some relationship that is toxic to you, but for those of you who do, you will be taking the reins, you will be setting a boundary, you will be saying no, you will be distancing yourself or taking space, you will be putting yourself first during this full moon if necessary, beautiful Aquarius. So let me shuffle the cards for you and let's see what the cards have to say for you, beautiful Aquarius, for your whole new world full moon. <laughs> and your card is <gasps> release control. I mean, Pluto is about power and control. Surrender to the journey. Some of you may have to do some surrendering. When do we do surrendering? When we, we're, someone's on one end of the rope, we're on the end, other end, we're both pulling, pulling our direction, right? Someone has to let go of the rope. This is saying let go of the rope if you've set a boundary and your boundary isn't being honored. We're all on our own journey, right? Not everybody is on the same kind of journey we are. Not everyone is at the vibration that we are. And I'm not saying any vibration is better or lower, or worse, whatever, than the other. I'm just saying that there could be people in your life or a person in your life that this applies to, relationships in which it's time to surrender because you're just not both in the same place. You both have different needs. So if you can let go of expectations and meet your own needs in the best way possible, ask spirit for possibilities, ask spirit for to show you your options, get support if you need it. And you're taking, you're on a whole new journey. You are, this card reminds me of the six of swords where the person is going on to on their own new journey. They're taking off in a new direction. So this is really beautiful. If you want to claim your new direction, beautiful Aquarius, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Capricorns. Hello, beautiful Capricorn. Capricorn, you are experiencing the Leo full moon, a very important full moon that comes just two weeks after your new moon that we just had on January 11th. This is a mini culmination of that new moon, Capricorn. You're going to experience this in your eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth, a whole new lease on life for you. This is also taxes and other kind of financial things like our investments and our loans and the things, you know, things we want to pay off and investments that we want to receive or return on. And this is also deep emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy. So this is a, this is the house of what is most important to us on a very deep, deep level. This is where you're having this very transformational, I believe, and I talk about this in the first half of the video very transformational full moon, Capricorn. 
Why is it transformational? Because the sun and Pluto are conjunct and they will be conjunct in your second house of money of earned income, also your values, your self-esteem, your sense of worthiness, what you feel you deserve. With the sun and Pluto here in your second house, you will likely receive, or if you haven't already during the Capricorn new moon, which I think many of us did, you may, may very likely receive an illumination, a truth, an aha moment, something, an epiphany from that sun that trined Uranus during your new moon. I have a separate video on that. You will very likely receive some illumination that enlightens you to where you want to make a kind of a change that will boost your power, boost your power in either eighth house matters or second house matters. This full moon is activating both of these areas of your chart, your eighth house of partnerships with money, <laughs> shared resources, how you with your partner, if your partner make decisions or how you internally, this could be an inner thing for you. You and your inner self are making decisions having to do with money or emotional or sexual intimacy. That's what's up for you during this Leo full moon, Capricorn. Your message from spirit is that it's time to embrace all sides of you, all parts of you, what we call our dark and our light. Our dark is sometimes our lightest light. Our dark can be where we have hidden parts of ourselves that are the most beautiful, exquisitely expressive, the new aspect of who you are ready to bring out into the world that maybe you haven't even seen before. Maybe you put it on a shelf like I did when I was a lawyer. I put my creative self on a shelf to do my lawyering job, and it was so suffocating for me. So all of us, many of us, at some point in our life, we put an aspect of us on, this, on the shelf, or it's just dormant. It's dormant for good reason, until it's time to wake up. A new part of you could be waking up, or there could be a part of you that you have shunned because other people shunned it or criticized you for it, and you have put that you know, in a corner and said, don't come out, <laughs> don't show anyone who, who you are because it's dangerous. Like that's something you, not actually dangerous, but felt dangerous to you. You get what I'm saying. Like there are, I hope, there are many parts of us that are sort of waiting in the shadows right now to come out and be expressed and be loved and cherished by you, most importantly, Capricorn. So Spirit says embrace all sides of yourself because they illuminate your diamond self. They are all the different facets of your di your beautiful, pure love, exquisite diamond self, Capricorn. So let me pull a card for you and we'll see what the cards have to say. Capricorn. <sighs> your card is, oh, I love this card. Gates of triumph, triumph. Victory. <laughs> Capricorn, success expands in your life when you walk through the portal. These black tree, these trees that have no leaves on them, they are black, they're charred, they look like they were in a fire, right? These are what I consider the darkness that the Spirit was talking about. You are walking through a portal. You are, all you have to do is acknowledge the parts of yourself that maybe you haven't acknowledged that are represented by these dark trees that don't have flourishing green leaves on them, walk through this portal. I feel like these trees represent the winter of your life. Walk, you're walking out of the winter. You're walking into the spring time, the new life, the new aspect of yourself. And some of you may really come alive when we get to Aries season. But this full moon is going to illuminate something for you that when you make a change, when you make a shift, when you see yourself in a different light, you're going to be ready, if not now in the spring, to really have a whole new day in your life, a brand new day, the sun rising in your life. So if you want to claim that, if you're ready to walk through the portal, beautiful Capricorn, claim it below. Claim your brand new day. Okay, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, you make me want to sing in your energy. <laughs> I know I'm being goofy. Sag, you, um, you're receiving a trine from this energy, and that's probably why I started getting 
do da 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 because I'm in this trying energy with you and Sag, you are receiving a trying to your ninth house of expansion, expansion. This is your higher learning. This is your spiritual expansion. This is you seeing from a new vantage point. For some of you, you will get the inspiration or you will already be doing this. You will be doing some travel. You were doing some long distance travel or just some travel that really brings you into new scenery that elevates you to a new level and maybe opens up your crown chakra, maybe brings in new divine insights that make you see yourself or your life with brand new eyes. Maybe give you the inspiration to take a step that you've been wanting to take but haven't had the courage to take. This area of adventure, ninth house, long distance travel, learning, higher learning, metaphysical kinds of coursework, learning more about astrology, for example. This area of your life is where you're receiving new divine inspiration. Now, at the same time, across from this ninth house is where the sun and Pluto will be together. That's your third house. That's your everyday local interactions, your local environment, your neighbors, your mindset and communication, writing, journaling, aunts, uncles, and cousins, landlords, people that you live with, could be roommates. This is where the sun and Pluto are illuminating something for you. They're showing you something. They are bringing in an epiphany or an aha moment, an awareness. And this could also be a short trip. Some of you will take short trips, not necessarily foreign travel. But whatever it is for you, it's going to bring about a change, a positive change, but you may have to make a little course correction in there somewhere. Because it's a trine, I don't see this as being a super challenging moon for you. You guys will have to let me know. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Your message from spirit is you're climbing to the top. When I tune into your energy, Sag, I saw you climbing a ladder, but it was covered with these beautiful leaves. It was like if you've ever seen one of those garden um, what are they called? You know, it's like a, like a hoop that you walk through covered with beautiful foliage or like, like flowering vines. That's what it was like. It was like you were climbing up something, but it was so full of blossoming, blooming leaves and flowers. It's so beautiful. And you were, you were like effortlessly climbing. So, and then spirit said, it's your, you're climbing to the top. You're ready to go. <laughs> Sag. It was a gorgeous image. So now, let's see what the cards have to say for you, Sad. <sighs> and third house is devices, too. So that's also where you might realize you need to replace a device on a very mundane level. and Or a car. You might have to get a new car or want to get a new car. Okay. <laughs> your card is rainbow blessings. Blessings are showering your life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Okay, you guys, thank you for letting me um, sing to you because I just can't. I don't know. It just keeps coming in your energy. I'm, I'm wanting to sing. Um, the rainbow and this beautiful portal and the, there's fresh flowers and there's greenery and there's water and there's mountains. It's just so beautiful. I don't think I have much more to add to this card. Blessings are showering your life. I mean, all I can say is claim those blessings. Claim them in the comments below if you want to, but claim them within yourself first and foremost. Beautiful Sag, because this is what's coming in your life for 2024. I love it so much. Okay, Scorpio. Hello, beautiful Scorpio. Scorpio, you are having this lunation of the Leo full moon. This is a pivotal new moon, and it will be for most of you in your 10th house of career. You may get receive some sort of aha moment or epiphany about your career, your legacy, your, your fulfillment, meaning. This is where you want to have passion, Scorpio. You need to have passion here. With Leo here, you need to have passion in what you do, how you spend most of your time. Some of you, this will mean semi-retirement or retirement. Others of you, this means starting a new business. Many of you, you are looking for what is going to be most in alignment with your soul going forward. You're receiving a square from this new this full moon. You're receiving a square, which is motivation and tension sometimes, but it, it motivates us to take action. It's where we feel like we need to make a change. And the sun and Pluto are together conjunct. 
illuminating something maybe that you haven't seen before or that you saw around the Capricorn noon, moon time about home, family, or childhood conditioning, your roots, wanting to belong, wanting to feel secure, wanting to feel like you matter in this world and that you are rooted wherever you're living or in your actual family. And this could be soul family too. We don't all feel rooted in our family of origin. Many of us don't, right? So this is where you may be making a change. You could be making some sort of change, Scorpio, up-leveling your life, taking the reins, taking control of either your career or your home and family or both. Some of you may move your home in order to say yes to a job or to live in some place that is more in alignment with your soul, Scorpio. Your message from spirit is attend to your heart. This is a, a full moon that rules the heart. I saw an image of emerald green healing light when I tuned into your energy. This is heart energy. So some of you will receive a heart healing during this full moon. Attend to your heart. If you, uh, this, this won't be all of you, but for those of you who have had a recent broken heart, you may want to go to a counselor or a coach to receive support for your emotional healing. And I'm not saying this will happen during this full moon. I'm just saying that something could come up for you around childhood conditioning, for example, that you're ready to heal. Scorpio. So let's pull a card for you. Scorpio. Beautiful Scorpio. Let's see what the cards have to say for you. Scorpio. Your card is infinite abundance, Scorpio. Abundance is pouring into your life. You know what I love about this card? They're not doing it alone. Many hands make light work. Many hands are working together to gather the fruits of their harvest. They are harvesting. This is going to be a harvest time for some of you. Some of you may have new people moving into your home. Some of you may be moving. Some of you may be really mustering the courage because as I spoke about at the beginning in part one of this video, this is about mustering strength and courage to rise to the next level, to become the greatest version, the next greatest version. We're moving into another level of our soul's evolution with Pluto and Aquarius. Scorpio, some of you may be just gathering the courage to up-level your life, either in career or home or both, but this card is giving you a gorgeous message of abundance. You are abundant, even if you don't see your abundance right now. If you're holding back on your abundance, if you have the money to do something, but you're afraid of spending it because you're afraid of not, you know, of just not having money in the future, this card is saying you will be taken care of. Take care of yourself. Do follow your heart's true calling. Use what you have now in order to bring about the blessings that your heart most needs now. Beautiful Scorpio. To claim your abundance, if you want to claim it, claim it in the comments below. Okay, Libras. Hello, beautiful Libra. Libra, you're experiencing this Leo full moon in your 11th house. The 11th house is your friendships, your communities, where you feel most supported. It's your alliances. It is also your eldest sibling, and it is your the groups and the organizations that you belong to, any causes, any humanitarian efforts that you make. This is also the 11th house. This is where we feel like the world is giving back to us what we're putting out. And if it's not the world, big picture world, it is a specific tribe that you are connecting with as you do your work or your life. It's also long, it's also long-term financial gains and our hopes, wishes, and dreams. This really is the house of fulfillment, the house of happiness. And this is where you're having this Leo full moon. It's a gorgeous place to have a sparkly, bold Leo full moon. This is where you're mustering the courage and the strength to up-level this area of your life. This is where you're taking control, you're taking the reins of your life. For some of you, this could have to do with investments. It could have to do with a friendship. It could have to do with a social media platform, if you have one, where you are taking back control in some way. Maybe you're making some sort of change that is going to improve your success in this area of your life. You're getting a sextile, which is a beautiful Beautiful energy, positive energy flow for you, Libra. 
you're receiving a sextile from the Leo energy, and that means that you have an opportunity that will be shown to you when you say, where's my opportunity? It doesn't just come in easily like a trine. I like to use the example of you're on an airplane, you're in a middle seat, and you're like, I'm so uncomfortable here. <laughs> you're like, you feel like you're in a straight jacket, and then you see a whole empty row, and you ask the flight attendant, and they tell you, yeah, go ahead and sit there. It's empty. And now you have a whole row. That is like a sextile. You have to see an opportunity. You have to look for and see the opportunity and then say yes to it. And it's also a new solution. So make sure and turn, tune into your higher guidance to receive that intuitive download or insight to move you forward if you need a solution. Beautiful Libra. Now where the sun and Pluto are together, illuminating something for you, showing you a truth that you didn't see before that's important for you to act on. This is your house of children, true love and romance. So someone you're dating possibly. Uh, also your creativity, your full creative expression. So this is where your passion could be quite ignited. You could see something in a very passionate way, in a very, but that feels quite intense because it is Pluto, Pluto's intense. And this is where you're going to be receiving an insight that's going to have you take back control of your power or raise your power if you haven't felt in your power in this 11th, 5th house area. Your message from spirit, Libra, is you know what you need to do. <laughs> you know what you need to do. We're going to have two eclipses in your sign, Libra, in 2024, one in the spring and one in the fall. And they are going to move you powerfully forward because eclipses do that. If they're anywhere near your planets and points, and of course I'll do separate videos on those eclipses when we get closer to that time. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, be sure and subscribe and tap the notification bell so you get notified when I upload videos. But you're going to really have a moving, moving and shaking. Um, this is going to be a pivotal year for you if that's needed for you, Libra. If it's needed for you to have any sort of forward push or course correction or just new wind in your sails, new. Some of us need the fire lit beneath us to make a change, positive change. And while I was shuffling the cards, while I was talking, a card fell out. So this is your card, Libra. And the card is vast vistas. Expand your horizons. I love this so much. Do you see how this person's been in a box? This reminds me of Jack in the Box for those of you who are older like me and you know that toy. <laughs> and this person's coming out of their box. They're coming out of their box. Libra, it's time to come out of your box. It's time to expand your horizons. This could be through travel. This could be through D through tuning into the divine, through meditation, through guided meditations, which I have a playlist of meditations that I will link to in the description box below for you. Um, I also have a free instant download meditation for you, a different one that you can get when you go to my website and subscribe to my inspirational updates. But I love, if you look at this card closely, you see a gorgeous view. You see these, these cliffs, and then there's this gorgeous view, and there's a boat, a beautiful sailboat. It's time for you to get on that boat and explore new horizons. Get out of the box. Get on the boat. The gorgeous sailboat, beautiful Libra. Say yes to new horizons. It's time for you to feel expansion in your life. Your life is expanding, Libra. If you want to claim this expansion, claim it in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Okay, Virgos. Hello, beautiful Virgo. Virgo, thank you for your patience. You are having this full moon in Leo in your 12th house of rest, retreat, rejuvenation. It's an awakening house. It's where we wake up to a story from our subconscious mind that is ready to change, that's ready to evolve. This is a soul evolutionary full moon, Virgo. This is where you are possibly receiving a mystical insight from your higher self, from your mystical self, Virgo, that is going to set you on a brand new path or that is going to help you up level your life. This is a full moon in which we're taking the reins of our life. We're taking back control where we've given control away and we are saying yes to our dreams. You may have a dream because 12th house is our dreams as well. You may have a dream during this full moon that shows you something you didn't see before which would be really cool. You may renovate your inner story, your inner narrative. You may rewire your mind by renovating a beautiful revenation. 
<laughs> a beautiful renovation of a story or a narrative about who you are or what your life is about or what you can achieve, what's possible for you, up-leveling that beautiful Virgo. At the same time, the Sun and Pluto are coming together, illuminating something in your sixth house of health. Virgo, you are connected to the sixth house. You're all about, you rule the sixth house, your energy. So this is your daily habits, your health habits, your, uh, your eating, your exercise, your getting the care that you need from a physician or a naturopath or Reiki, energy healing, yoga, all those things. Um, this is your schedules. Do, you, do your schedules work for you? Does your daily work work for you? Do you like your job? This is where you're getting a re <laughs> revelation. And so Virgo, some of you may realize, I don't like my job. I can't live with this toxic whatever in my work environment anymore. Or possibly just some change needs to be made that is affecting your health, either emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. And when you see that, act on it, because when you act on it, you're going to set in motion a whole new path for yourself, a much better path. Your message from the divine is take extra good care of your body during this full moon. Eat more greens if you need to. Get more rest. Work on your sleep hygiene if that's important um, and necessary. Notice how the changes that you make in your physical body or what's coming in right now is your mental, any mental loops or the stories you're telling yourself. Some of you may want to do some breath work to clear out an imprint or negativity from your energy field that isn't working for you. Some of you may want to catalyze or like, um, Activate an image of abundance and in your meditations, go back to that image of abundance repeatedly. So that will help you rewire your mental state as well. Um, and your emotions, uplift your emotions. Something is, it's time to do some sort of upliftment of your mental, physical, or spiritual health. Beautiful Virgo. Most of you are very good at that. You have a gorgeous healing nature. Most of you are very good at, 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 you have at least one tool um, to do that work. And I do have meditations, a playlist of them in the description box below too that might help you. So Virgo, let's see what the cards have to say for you. Beautiful Virgo. Ah, oh, for the Leo full moon. Your card is grounding. Go deep and explore your roots. Wow. This is one of my favorite practices. Actually, in my book, The Magic of Saying Yes, I talk about communing with a tree. It's one of the first exercises in my book where you can put your body up against a tree and receive the, the, the physical rejuvenation from the tree up your spine and also going to a tree. If there's a tree in your, your neighborhood or in your nearby or whatever. I used to go when I was going through a really major change in my life, um, in my marriage, and I talk about this in my book, I used to go to a tree that was in a cemetery and I would sit by the tree and I got all kinds of messages, not to mention it was very grounding for me. <laughs> so Virgo, grounding, you know this as an earth sign. Grounding is so important. If you want to claim your radiant health, if you want to claim that you are here rooted, because this is about your roots, to go deep and explore your roots. Trees that are deeply rooted cannot be swayed by external events or people, right, Virgo? So if you want to take the message of this card and run with it, some of you may do some ancestral healing work. Others of you may go into a childhood wound and do some healing on that as well. Claim your rootedness. Claim your radiant health, beautiful Virgo. Claim that you are in a happy, healthy, abundant work environment, if that's what you want. Whatever you want to claim, claim it in the comments below. I'd love to hear. My beautiful friend, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for your likes of this video, your comments, 
your shares to other people who love astrology, your subscribes. When you like, comment, share, and subscribe, you send a message to the algorithm that then puts my videos out to more people who love astrology and really helps my channel grow. So I am so grateful to you for that. Thank you to my Sunday chat friends for joining me today for this video. And thank you for whenever you're watching this video. This has been a general reading of the full moon in Leo. If you would like a personal astrology consultation, not just about how this Leo full moon is activating your natal planets or points in your chart. This is quite a pivotal full moon. But in addition to that, what else is going on in the transits at this current time? If you would like to know more about this and any challenging transits that are happening for you right now, what's going on with them? How can you feel most empowered during this time? How can you work with the energies? And when will these transits complete for you? What's coming up that you can look forward to? And what do I see in your natal chart that jumps out at me as your strengths, your talents, your gifts, your dharma, your life purpose? You can do a life purpose reading, a heart's desire reading, a natal chart reading, or a 2024 year ahead astrology consultation. I also offer coaching support, clarity sessions, and deep dive soul alchemy coaching. So go to my website, check out the testimonials of people who have worked with me before, and that will give you a sense of whether you feel called to work with me. As promised, I have a free gift for you, and that free gift is a soothing guided meditation that will connect you with your heart's true calling. It will connect you with the unconditional love of your spiritual guides. And to get that, just go to my website, subscribe for free to my inspirational updates that will come to your inbox weekly and give you the astrology of the week. Subscribe there and you will receive that free gift instant download. To those of you who have donated to my channel, huge, huge thank you. I am so grateful for your support. You absolutely make my day. Don't forget to subscribe so we stay connected and I'll see you back here very soon. And until my next video, I am sending you all my love.